Hi guys, I just want to share a few things that God has been showing me in the last few days um, that I'm hoping and praying will be an encouragement to you all. I find that when God shows us the detail of what he's doing, even glimpses of it, it actually builds our faith and it encourages us and it helps us to understand uh, what he's doing so that when we see things in the natural, we're actually able to perceive what he's doing in the spirit, which is very exciting. So when I woke up the other morning, I saw a picture of Nebuchadnezzar and God was saying to me that he's going to unleash a wildness, a wild madness upon the world leaders that are fighting against the nations and attacking the nations right now. I just saw the Lord say that in their pride, he is going to, um, he's going to lead them into a madness, a sudden madness. So, so the word that I heard was sudden. If you read the story of Nebuchadnezzar, I'll just read a little bit of it quickly. What happened with Nebuchadnezzar is that he was filled with incredible pride. And actually, when he stood on his balcony and he looked at Babylon, he was so prideful. And he said, um, it says here, Is not this great Babylon, which I have built by my mighty power as a royal residence and for the glory of my majesty? While the words were still in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven. O King Nebuchadnezzar, to you it is spoken. The kingdom has departed from you, and you shall be driven from among men, and your dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. And you shall be made to eat grass like an ox, and seven periods of time shall pass over you, until you know that the Most High rules the kingdom of men and gives it to whom he will. Immediately. So this was the thing. God showed me it will be very sudden. Immediately the word was, was fulfilled against Nebuchadnezzar. He was driven from among men and ate grass like an ox. And his body was wet with the dew of heaven till his hair grew as long as eagle's feathers and his nails were like bird's claws. So I felt like God wants to, um, actually I feel like God wants the church to be praying and agreeing with this scripture over Nebuchadnezzar that God will bring the world leaders that are committing great evil right now against the people, that he would bring them to a place of humility, that he would take them in their prideful state, um, unleash a spirit of wild madness, madness over them, that will actually be, I see God mocking the enemy. He's going to bring the enemy to his, to his knees. I see the, the puppets. There's puppets in the front, which are the world leaders. Um, they are in the infrastructure that the enemy is building, you know. So the puppets are the frontline people that we see. But um, the real powers are in the background. So I see the puppets coming into a real wild madness. And I see the, the ones that's in the background trying to control the puppets are going to lose their control. I heard the Lord say he's going to break the infrastructure of the enemy from the inside. So I heard that very clearly as well. So the first thing that God showed me was the Nebuchadnezzar picture. And the second thing he showed me was Samson. So I'm, I'm sharing this because I really believe that the Lord wants us to pray. Um, firstly, that he would bring the world leaders to their knees. He would bring a, a humiliation upon them. And judgment, but what I saw was the mercy of God extended um, to these leaders because some of them, I see some of them, um, they've been traitors, you know, they've been traitors, but I see God through our prayers, some of them will come to their senses. I, I think most probably a very small percentage. But some of them will come to their senses like Samson did. And that was the picture of Samson. So God said to me, he's going to humble them like Nebuchadnezzar. But um, some of them will come to their senses in this place of incredible humiliation. Um, and they will cry out to God like Samson did in the last, you know, in that time when Samson was holding the pillars, he was standing and he was pushing the pillars down. Before he pushed it down, he actually cried out to God and he said, Lord, um, give me strength one more time that I will die with the Philistines. So what I saw was um, I saw these frontline world leaders coming to humiliation through this wild madness. And then some of them crying out to God 
realizing, because with Nebuchadnezzar, what actually happened was the moment that he understood his position before God Almighty, his senses came back to him. So it says here, which is really powerful, it says, at the end of the days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted my eyes to heaven and my reason returned to me and I blessed the Most High and praised and honored him who lives forever. So what I saw um, was that the world leaders, and this is what I'm sharing so that we can pray in this direction, that they would come to humility, that God would bring them to a place of madness and only those who are willing to repent that God would re restore their senses, their reason, and that from the inside where they're standing, because they are on the inside of this whole um, infrastructure, that they would die because I do believe they will die for the, for the right thing. If they, if they choose to be like Samson, it will cost them their lives. But I see them pushing the pillars down and being courageous. They will, they, would, they, they will be remembered that they lived as traitors up to this point, but they will die as heroes, like we remember Samson. So that was a very important thing. And I really feel like God is calling us to watch our words when we speak about um, presidents and ministers and people in governmental positions, I think it's very important that we don't curse them, that we pray for them, that we pray that God would humble them, that they would repent, and that they would stand with the people in the nations and do the courageous thing to help break this thing down so that, the, so that it will break down the, the infrastructure from the inside and the pillars would cause the roof to fall. So that's, that's very important. Um, and then the other thing that God showed me as well yesterday, I saw, um, it's, a, it's a horrible picture, but it's, it was like an abortion picture. But I heard God say, I'm going to pull this baby that the, that, that the enemy has been um, incubating. I'm going to pull it out limb by limb. And I heard the Lord say that that which they've done to the nations and that which they've even done in the act of real abortions, um, God is going to do to them. He's going to abort their plans. He's going to abort this baby that they're trying to birth right now, the new world order, which is the baby that I see. God said he will, um, he will, he will pull it out limb by limb that nothing, nothing will remain. Nothing will remain. Um, I, I believe that God is going to break down everything they've built. Everything that they've built, he's going to break down. And there's a time, I think for the bride of Christ, it's important to realize that um, we are going into a time of God building the nations afresh. You know, I think that, um, you know, God works in times and seasons. And when we read the word and we read about the Antichrist, and all that stuff. It's very easy to look at the times and think that, okay, well, this is meant to happen now. The Antichrist is meant to rise right now. Um, they are going to take over. But I clearly hear God say he's going to pull this thing apart, literally apart. Everything they've built, he's going to destroy. Um, and there's, this is not the time where the church is going to be persecuted, killed, and... Um, you know, where we're going to go into, obviously there's a time of persecution, but it's a time where God is giving the church victory. There's a period of time where the bride of Christ is going to reign on the earth as the mature bride of Christ before the Antichrist will take over. And it's not the time. It's not the time. I feel that so strongly to say that. Um, it's important that the church understands this is not the time uh, where we will see the Antichrist take over. It's not the time because it's the time of the bride of Christ. It is the time of the bride of Christ to take her place. It's not the time of the Antichrist. Um, it's very important that we understand our time and our season right now. Um, it's the most exciting time the church has ever been in. It is as big, it, the time that we're in now is as big in the heavenlies um, as it was when Jesus was sent to the earth. Because when Jesus was sent to the earth, it was the fulfillment of prophecy that God would send his son and that he would um, set the nations free, would set the people free, would redeem us with his blood. We're in the time right now where God is um, manifesting his bride 
the bride for whom he came to die. It's an incredibly exciting time to be alive. If you are a born again believer of Jesus Christ, this is the most exciting time that, that the church has ever been in. So I just wanted to, what else did I want to say? Um, oh yes, I wanted to say not to neglect the gathering of the saints at this time. There's going to be an incredible outpouring coming. I can feel it in everybody I speak to that are feeling the same thing. There's going to be an incredible outpouring coming at this time. Do not neglect the gathering of the saints. Um, it's very important, even though we're going into a time where we will see the Acts Church again, out of walls, out of buildings. Um, but it doesn't mean that the saints don't gather. We still call together. We, we call to worship together, to praise together, to pray together, to encourage each other to grow in the word. So I feel it's a very, very significant time for the church to come together and not to be um, isolated. And then the other thing that I wanted to share quickly is just a few points. Um, I really felt God say that it's a time of rest. And I saw the picture of the Jordan River. You know, when the Israelites crossed um, the Jordan before they went in to take um, Jericho, in that period of time, God called the men to be circumcised because there was a generation in the wilderness that didn't have the circumcision. So during that time of circumcision, there was a time of rest before they went in to take Jericho. I feel like we are at that riverbank where God is actually asking us to rest in this time. I think that it's, people are very tired. The church is very tired. We've gone through the wilderness and we've really been through a lot. Um, but it's a time where God wants to restore people. He wants to heal us. He wants to minister to us by spirit. And he wants to strengthen us for the battle that lies ahead. But the battle that lies ahead, uh, he's going to fight it for us. He is going to fight this battle for us. Um, it's a time of rest and I believe that we are in for a very exciting 2022. I believe the church is in for a very exciting 2022. It's a time of incredible release. Um, it's a time of incredible victory. We're going to take territory back. We're going to push the enemy back. And um, it's important that we get our faith restored in this time of rest. Get your faith restored. Soak up his presence. Um, fill yourself up with his word. And be expectant for what lies ahead. Don't, don't look at the last two years or even 10 years and be discouraged. Look at 2022 and know that God is with us. We're in that time. Read that story of Joshua when Jesus stood before him saying, I'm the commander in chief. The battle is mine. He said, I'm not here to take sides. I'm here to take charge. I'm here to take charge. So we're in a very exciting time where God is going to do incredible things, but he's going to do things outside of our um, perception right now. And that's why I wanted to share this. I want you to have an expectation that he is going to interrupt and intervene by causing that madness to come upon the, the prideful uh, people in governmental positions that are doing a lot of evil right now. He's going to humble them. He's going to bring them to a place of humiliation. He's going to give them a choice in that place. They will have a choice to repent. And those who repent will be uh, given their reason and they will be courageous. And I want to encourage, if you are inside a governmental position, choose to do the right thing. Be courageous. Be part of what God is doing to break down the enemy's infrastructure from the inside. And I want to encourage you to know that God is doing an exciting thing. He's going to break down what the enemy has um, try to birth. It will not be born. And um, yeah, and take a time of rest. I'm just looking at my notes here so I don't forget anything. Take a time of rest in this time over Christmas and let the Holy Spirit just minister healing and comfort to you. Let the dry places be watered again and let your faith be renewed. Have, have new faith for the new year and partner with God's spirit and expect him to do the miraculous. Let him, let him do the wild, the big, you know, the spectacular, because our God is a great God and um, he holds the nations in his hands. He holds our life in his hands and 
He is a good God with a good plan. And everything that he has promised over your life, over your nation, it is yea and amen. And we are going to start seeing the reward of the righteous. I want to encourage you. Um, this is the time of reward. God is going to start adding. He's going to start giving gifts and adding to the ones who have been walking in faithfulness and righteousness. So be expectant. Sending lots of love. Have a wonderful um, holiday time and Christmas time. Okay, bye.